Hi there, and welcome to this screencast where we're going to be starting to explore different ways of proof. Uh, we have looked at direct proofs of conditional statements in several places, and in this section we're going to start introducing alternatives to direct proof, uh, kind of one by one. So the first method we're going to look at is called proof by contraposition. In a proof by contra contraposition, what we're going to do is we're still proving a conditional statement, uh, but we're going to prove the contrapositive of that statement instead. Now let's review a little bit about what we know about the contrapositive. The contrapositive of a conditional statement, if p then q, is the conditional statement, if not q, then not p. So to form the contrapositive, remember we're going to switch the conclusion and the hypothesis of the original statement and negate each. And so contrapositive. And the main thing to know about the contrapositive, other than how to form it, is that it's logically equivalent to the statement we started with. So if I wanted to prove a statement, if p then q, and for whatever reason that was hard or unappetizing, or whatever, I could form its contrapositive, and if I can prove it, then it's equivalent to proving the original statement, and possibly in some cases the contrapositive will be easier to work with. So let's look at an example of this using uh, just simple notions of evenness and oddness, and here's a conjecture if n squared is even, and n is, a, is an integer here, I should have said that, if uh, n squared is even, then n is even. Now in a direct proof of this statement, if I wanted to prove this directly, okay, the first line would be to say assume n squared is even. So I would assume that n squared is even. And a lot would take place, perhaps in the proof, blah, 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 blah. And the very last line would say, uh, therefore, n is even. Now, just think about what would go in the blah, blah, blah. What would go in the middle? Okay, I would start by assuming something about n squared being even, and I want to conclude something about n being even. Now, normally when you go from n squared to n, this involves taking a square root of something. Now, that seems a little weird. Okay, n squared being even, I could say that there exists an integer k such that n squared equals 2k, and then maybe the bright idea would be to take the square root of both sides. Okay, that's no big deal on this side, but the square root of 2 times k, I would like that to be another even integer. This seems like it'd be pretty hard to even think that that's an integer at all, much less an even integer. So a direct proof of this is a little sort of unappealing because taking a square root, which is the natural operation to get from the uh, hypothesis to the conclusion, doesn't seem to be working very well for us. So this is an excellent opportunity to try the contrapositive instead. So here's what the contrapositive of the statement that we're trying to prove would look like. Okay, I would need to reverse the hypothesis and conclusion and negate each. So it would say if uh, n is not even, and not even means odd, so if n is not even or odd, then n squared is odd. So that's what the contrapositive of the statement we're trying to prove would say. And it's equivalent. These two things are logically equivalent. So if I prove one, I have proven the other. And the reason the contrapositive would be an appealing idea here is that if I assume n is odd, it's pretty easy to get from n to n squared. Okay, uh, If n is odd, that means there's an integer out there, k, such that n equals 2k plus 1. And it's easier to conceptualize squaring both sides of this equation than it would be taking the square root of both sides of this equation. So this seems like a good opportunity to use uh, the contrapositive. So let's go with it. I've got a blank slide over here, and we're going to set up a no-show table. So here's my column for the step. And here I'll put the uh, thing that I know at that step. And over here, I'll put the reason. This is actually a fairly short proof once we have this written down here. So we're going to prove the, the contrapositive. So the first thing we're going to assume is to assume that n is odd. n is odd, and that's the reason is the hypothesis. The very last line of the proof is going to conclude that n squared is odd. And we don't really know what the reason for that is yet. So to get from here to here, uh, let's start with a forward step by just uh, saying there exists an integer k such that n is equal to 2k plus 1. And that's the definition of odd. Okay, Nothing surprising at this point. But now let's think what we need to do. I know something about n, and I want to conclude something about n squared. Okay, So let's square both sides. So this means that n squared is equal to 2k 
plus one, the quantity squared, and that's just algebra. Specifically, uh, it's squaring both sides of an equation. So let's use the FOIL method to expand out the uh, right-hand side. That would give me 4k squared plus 4k plus one. Again, that's FOILing algebra, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's now factor out a two from some of these terms here, 2k squared, 2k plus one. Again, that's algebra, that's factoring. And then, uh, what the, you, this is a very familiar feeling proof at this point. Uh, I'm going to take this thing and say that's an integer. Okay, so P5 is going to say that, uh, let's call it Q equals 2K squared plus 2K is actually an integer. I'm going to make that claim, and the reason is because of the closure of the set of integers under multiplication and addition. And so, therefore, what I've done here, uh, just to put one last line here, is I now have written n squared is equal to 2q plus 1, where q is an integer. And again, I've gotten, done that by setting uh, q equal to 2k squared plus 2k. And then that gets me to the end. Now that I've written n squared is equal to this form right here, I know n squared is odd. So that's the definition of odd. So this is a pretty basic proof, right? Um, this is a proof that's quite like some of the ones you've seen before. Uh, how did we get there? Well, we had this statement uh, that what we've really proven is that if n squared is even, <laughs> then n is even, although it doesn't look like that. The word even never appeared. That's because we're proving the contrapositive instead. But since we've proven the contrapositive uh, and the contrapositive is equivalent to the statement, we've actually proven the statement that we wanted. So we're done. So proof by contrapositive, we're going to see another example in the next screencast, so thanks for watching.